Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are learning about the world's first CVVD engine which stands for Continuously Variable Valve Duration. This technology is currently used in the 1.6 liter turbo engine of the 2020 Hyundai Sonata. Now this is a very cool technology but in order to understand how it works we need to understand how valves work. So here we have a simple single cylinder engine and of course you have your four strokes, intake, compression, power, and exhaust. So during the intake stroke, you open up your intake valve to allow air to enter in the cylinder. Same thing for the exhaust. To allow that air to escape, you open up the exhaust valve so the air can travel out. Now on the most basic of engines, everything about how that valve opens and closes is fixed because the valve opens and closes based on the path of the cam profile, which does not change. But on modern engines, there's actually three variables as it relates to valves that we can change. So valve timing, we're changing when do we actually open up this valve, earlier or later. Valve lift, we're changing how much do we actually open up the valve, a little bit or a lot. And then finally, what Hyundai is adding to the mix here is valve duration. So do we open it for a very short amount of time or do we open it for a long amount of time? So graphically, here's what this looks like. We're looking at time versus valve lift. And with variable valve timing, as you can see, you can shift where that profile occurs, that cam profile causing the valve to lift up. And so you can shift that left or you can shift it right. With variable valve lift, you can actually shift how high does the valve actually open or how low does the valve actually open. And often this will also change duration as well, however not independently. So independently changing variable valve duration, you're changing how wide is that cam profile or how narrow is that cam profile and that reduces or increases how long the valve actually remains open. Now, I already have a video going into great detail of how variable valve timing and variable valve lift work, if you're interested. So in this video, we're purely going to focus on variable valve duration. Up until this point, no mass-produced engine has been able to continuously vary how long a valve remains open relative to engine speed. And you might be wondering about Koenigsegg's free valve. We will get into that later on in the video. So, how does Hyundai do it? Well, let's start with the valve and then work our way backwards. So here you can see the two valves for a single cylinder. These are both intake valves. And above that intake valve, we have our camshaft. And so you can see as that camshaft and the cam there rotates, it forces this rocker arm to pivot. And as this rocker arm pivots, it forces the intake valve open. And then as the cam profile passes past that rocker arm, a spring forces that intake valve to go back up. So if we had an operating four-stroke engine, the cycle would look something like this. First, we would have our intake stroke, then we would have our compression stroke, then we would have our power stroke, then we would have our exhaust stroke, and then the cycle would repeat itself. Now, what's very special about this setup is that the cam shaft and the cam lobe are not directly attached. So you can see this little line right here on the cam shaft, and then you can see that black dot on the cam lobe. And so as it rotates, you can see their position always remains the same. They're both always pointing the same direction. However, I can change their relative positioning by rotating this knob. And so as you can see, now when it rotates around, their relative speeds are actually different at any one given point in time. All right, so what I'm able to do by rotating this knob is change the position of this wheel. And by changing that position of the wheel, you can see I change the valve duration. So here at the bottom, you can see those three little dots, and that's to help visualize seeing this wheel move left or right. And so look at what happens with the cam lobe versus the cam shaft. And so with the position all the way on the left here, you can see the cam shaft actually moves past that dot. The line moves past the dot, meaning up top, the cam shaft is rotating faster than the cam lobe. But then once we get to our intake valve, you'll see that dot passes by the line. So the cam lobe is actually moving quicker than the cam shaft, meaning our valve duration is actually shorter. Now if I move this all the way to the other end, you'll notice the opposite occurs. So our cam shaft is now being passed by the cam lobe, meaning up top the cam lobe is moving quickly. 
but once we get down to our intake valves, that cam lobe slows down. And as you can see, the camshaft speed remains the same, but the cam lobe has slowed down. And so your valve duration actually increases. Now, if we take our positioner and go back to the center, then once again, they are both rotating together the entire time. And remember, both the camshaft and the cam profile always have the same RPM. The thing that's changing is through that one revolution, their relative speeds will change. So in the course of a minute, they'll spin around the exact same number of times. However, by changing this positioner, the relative speed through that one revolution is what's actually changing. Okay, so I'm going to do my best to show these side by side. And you can see that on the left, the amount of time the valves remain open is significantly less than the amount of time the valves remain open on the right. And all of this is done simply through changing positioning. Okay, so mechanically, how do you change the relative speed of the cam lobe versus the cam shaft? So let's start with the big picture and then work our way down to the details. So first, we have an actuator. And this is going to be electronic. However, in this case, we have a little hand crank to show it working. So as this actuator rotates this shaft right here, you can see there's a worm gear which is causing the positioner to rotate. So that's essentially doing the same thing as this positioner right here. So as I rotate this, it positions the cam wheel left or right. As I rotate this, it positions the cam wheel left or right. So now we need to figure out how does positioning this wheel left or right cause the cam lobe to have a different speed from the cam shaft. So the key to understanding this will require an animation that Hyundai has sent. What we're looking at is a simplified version of the linkage between the camshaft in purple and the cam lobe, which rotates with the blue cylinder. The camshaft speed will always be the same. So as we rotate the assembly every 90 degrees, you'll notice that in all scenarios, the purple shaft is always pointing in the same direction meaning it's always rotating at the same speed. This is our camshaft. The cam lobe is attached to the blue shaft. So first, let's analyze the simplest setup in the middle. Here you'll notice the blue and purple shafts are always rotating at the same speed. And that's because the orange linkage center point is also the center point for the camshaft. But what if you move that orange center point to the left? Well, that gives us our leftmost example. As you can see, that causes the blue shaft to move very slowly when it is on the left side and very quickly when it is on the right side. If you look at the rightmost example, where the orange linkage center point is to the right of the camshaft center point, you'll notice the camshaft moves very quickly on the left side and very slowly on the right side. So as an example, if you were to place an intake valve to the left of the leftmost camshaft, it would have a very long duration. If you were to place an intake valve to the left of the rightmost camshaft, it would have a very short duration. So that's exactly what this mechanism is doing. It's using a linkage which alters its rotational center as you position it left to right, which causes the cam to have a relative speed difference versus the camshaft. So what does this mechanism actually look like? Well, here you can see a glimpse of it on the model. As I rotate the knob left to right, you can see that position changing, but it's easier to see by taking apart the actual camshaft. So here we have our camshaft, and as you can see, three of the cylinder's cams are perfectly intact, and then one of the cams for one of the cylinder has been removed from this camshaft. So now let's look at how the forces pass through this. So ultimately, a timing chain is what's going to cause this entire camshaft to rotate. And then you can see we have a hole right here, and so this slider goes into that slot. So now the camshaft forces this slider to rotate. Now that slider is attached to a wheel. And so that wheel is now forced to rotate from the slider, which rotates from the camshaft. And then another slider is placed into this side of the wheel. And so now, once again, power comes from the camshaft all the way to this final slider here. And then finally, we put our cam on. And so this slides on and goes into that groove right there. So now the whole system is driven by the camshaft. However, the rotational speed is disconnected. So you can see that I can rotate 
the cam without rotating the cam shaft. So once again, if I remove that cam and the wheel, you can see the linkage inside, which allows for that relative speed differential. So the camshaft remains exactly in place and you can position the wheel left or right. Now you can overlay the actual parts onto the simplified animation to see how this all ends up working. Slide the wheel to the left or right and the linkage center point changes, altering the valve duration. Now here's where the lovely YouTube commenters come in and let me know that this system is far too complicated and there's no way it could be reliable because after watching a quick video on the internet, you certainly know more about this technology versus the engineers who spent nine years developing it. Yes, nine years to develop this technology, nine years that went into you know, creating it, testing it, making sure it was reliable. By the way, it comes with a 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty. You also might have noticed the holes and grooves on the mechanism as I was taking it apart, as there are oil lubrication ports throughout the camshaft to keep everything running smoothly. Hyundai also has a system in place to ensure that when these parts are manufactured, their tolerances all match up for the final assembly. What's also cool is this is a purely mechanical system. For something to fail, something must fail mechanically, meaning a part has to actually break for things to go wrong. With design, material selection, part sizing, and lubrication, you can minimize the chances of failure. My ultimate point here being you and I cannot tell simply by looking at this how reliable the system is going to be. I don't have the data to prove one way or the other. So there's no reason for me to just simply say it's not going to be reliable. And I'm going to assume that Hyundai did their homework and ultimately time will tell us whether or not these things actually pan out to be reliable. Okay, so what's the actual benefit of this system? Well, Hyundai says it allows for up to 5% better fuel economy, up to 4% better performance, and up to 12% reduced emissions. So how does this system actually increase horsepower? Well, think about your two different extremes here. So if your intake valve is only open for a very short duration, you don't allow for much air to actually enter the cylinder, so you can't make that much power. But likewise, if you leave it open for far too long, then the piston's gonna start working its way back up, pushing the air back out of the cylinder, and thus you're not gonna have as much air, and thus you can't make as much power. So somewhere in the middle is going to be that ideal duration for the valve to remain open. And that duration changes depending on what RPM you're at. So at any given load, at any given RPM, there is an ideal, there is a peak to how much power you can make for that given RPM, depending on duration. And so what you wanna do with that duration is optimize it for every single RPM, not just one or two, which is what most engines will do. If they have variable valve lift, then you know they've got two different durations that they can choose between. So the beauty of this system is its flexibility in allowing you to optimize at any RPM and thus improving horsepower across a wide range. From an efficiency standpoint, allowing for really long valve durations means you can run the Atkinson cycle. So as that piston is moving back up during the compression stroke, you leave the intake valve open, pushing out some of the air and fuel, and thus your compression ratio is smaller than your expansion ratio, and this is a more efficient way for the engine to operate. And again, that timing will be dependent on RPM. So a specific valve duration will be optimal for running maximum efficiency at any given RPM and any given load. Now emissions are improved by altering valve timing and duration to ensure that when you have a cold start of your engine, the catalytic converter heats up as quickly as possible. Now from the very beginning of this video, you may have been wondering, wait a minute, what about Koenigsegg's free valve? This system can completely vary valve duration. And it is a very cool technology, although we haven't yet seen it used in a mass produced vehicle, but it does have its advantages. So I asked this question to Hyundai, you know, why not use a system like free valve? And they gave me three reasons. First of all, cost, that's always going to be a reason uh, towards not adopting certain technologies. If it's too expensive, ultimately in the long run, it won't end up happening. Second of all, efficiency. So they had concerns about how much energy does it take to actually run the valve system versus how much energy benefits do you receive from that valve system. And if that trade-off doesn't work out, it may not be worth doing. 
And then the final concern was around reliability. So Hyundai wanted to have a purely mechanical system so that the event of a failure was caused purely by a mechanical failure. That's something that's fairly easy to predict through you know, FEA, through design, through testing. And so those are the three reasons that they gave me for why they didn't choose to use a system like free valve. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that this is a better or worse system overall. We're just looking at the logic of why Hyundai went the route that they did. Did. And it's very cool to see this technology actually end up in a production engine. So if you'd like to learn more about variable valve timing, variable valve lift, or Koenigsegg's free valve, I have additional videos on those topics. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, of course feel free to leave them below.